I'm very happy to introduce our today's speaker, Elden Almanto from Harvard, who is going to talk on bus and K groups of schemes in mixed characteristic. Cool. Uh, yeah, so there's a bit of a change on the title. So it's positive and mixed characteristics. And uh, thank you so much for the invitation. It's like an amazing honor to speak here. So please interrupt. I guess that's the culture of the seminar, which is kind of great. And it's also kind of great uh, to, to, you know, to, to speak where I, I don't really have to give that much background. Everyone is sort of an expert already. Um, so I will say this is in progress, by the way. So uh, there are some um, things to sort out. But yeah, so I'll talk about uh, joint work with Martin Spears. So the, the dream or the overarching goal for me is to uh, understand in the broad sense of the word, uh, the algebraic K theory Um, of singular schemes or non-smooth schemes. So what makes it kind of funny and tricky is the fact that there is a lack of A1 invariance. So here's a theorem due to Quillen. So whenever X is a regular Noetherian scheme, then um, the algebraic K theory of X is isomorphic to the algebraic K theory of X times A1. So this is a phenomenon which uh, everyone here surely likes. It's called homotopy invariance. And has led to a lot of good things like, you know, in particular, the inspiration behind like motivic homotopy theory, right? Um, Okay, so that, that's kind of great. So I'll, I'll tell you what um, you've sort of been taking for granted whenever you impose this uh, A1 invariance business, yeah? So I wanna do that by, by sort of reminding everyone of, of Levine's Konibo Tower. So, so Levine, Konibo Tower. So as a way to get the motivic spectral sequence uses this heavily. All right, so let me remind you. So we have this uh, full set, S, P, X. Uh, Lesha has entered the waiting room. <laughs> uh, S, P, X, R, right? So this is the full set consisting of the following. So W is a closed subscheme. So closed integral subscheme of x times delta uh, r, right? So uh, I should say x is a smooth scheme over a field uh, subject to the you know, usual transversality condition on co-dimension. So the co-dimension of x times f of w intersect x times f is greater than equals to p uh, for all w inside this poset, right? So this r is responsible for a uh, but this, so this R is responsible for this R and this P is responsible for this P. Okay, so then you can define uh, K, P, X, R, right? So this is a spectrum. It's defined as follows, is the co-limit across this S, P, X, R of a certain um, supported K theory. So it's the fiber uh, of the map from uh, the K theory of X into the K theory of X times Delta R, right, minus W. So in other words, this is uh, the K theory supported at W, if you like. Okay. Uh, so this transversality condition lets us assemble this spectrum into a simple Schwarz spectrum. So R mapping to KPXR from the simple Schwarz spectrum. So then what do you do? Okay, so then you take the uh, geometric realization and you have this K P X dot, uh, well, I guess, I mean, geometrically realize this and you get K P X or something. Uh, then you can assemble this SP varies into a filtered spectrum. 
right? So we have k zero x, we have k uh, uh, k p x, right? And this forms a filtered spectrum. So here comes the, the main point is that this is just equivalent to the K theory of X since it's obtained as the geometric realization of K times X delta dot. And in the situation where you have A1 invariance, then uh, you know this is just a constant diagram. Um, okay, so from this, you obtain like the E1 page uh, of a spectral sequence whose E2 page by Levine is the motivic spectral sequence. Okay, so you see that if you perform this procedure, which sort of highlights the intimate relationship between blocks high child groups or algebraic, higher algebraic cycles with algebraic K theory, um, you, you are filtering only the correct thing when you have A1 invariance, right? You, whenever you have this, uh, this thingy right here. Okay. So without that, uh, this procedure is absolutely moot. Right? It just doesn't work, okay? So it really relies on the fact that X is smooth. And, uh, so more or less, so Vorse's conjecture. Yeah, the cat is doing something, but okay, Vorse's conjecture uh, is like, this implication is reversible. So um, K, so homotopy invariance of a K theory uh, is more or less the same thing as uh, X, is X being regular. Sorry. Okay. Right. Um, so that's uh, that's that's why you know you can you can never escape if you want to construct a, a motivic filtration you have to deal with non A one invariant phenomenon if you want to extend your situation beyond smooth stuff. Okay. Sorry. This cat is disturbing. <laughs> okay. Uh, any questions? Yeah, any questions so far? Okay, so uh, because of this, uh, yeah, because of this phenomenon, you have to sort of explain away or like try to understand the obstruction from K theory to being A1 invariant, right? So that's part of a, just a small step in this big goal of trying to understand K theory via motivic methods beyond uh, the smooth situation. Yeah, so, uh, so just more a more humble goal is to uh, uh, understand the obstruction uh, for K theory to be a one variant. Okay, so uh, yeah, so what's the deal with this thing? So I would just make a quick definition first. Uh, so NK of a scheme is defined to be the fiber of uh, the map from K of X times A1 into K of X. Yeah, so it's a very simple definition. Uh, and, and okay, so just simple observations. So of course, um, we get a long as x sequence, right? That involves all these groups, n, k, j of x. So this is a, uh, you know, Bass didn't have the language of spectra back then. So he just defined, um, I guess this definition is really due to Bass. He really defined just these groups and these groups, you know, fit into the usual long as x sequence. A1, k of x and so on. Okay, but notice that there's also a splitting. So in fact, nk uh, of x directs some k of x is equivalent to k of x times a1. So there's a canonical component inside k of x a1 called nk. And uh, the goal today is to sort of say something about this nk groups and you know understand what you're dealing with when you wanna uh, understand k theory of singular schemes, right? Okay. so. And K is a remarkable object. <laughs> it's a quite remarkable object.
So here's a theorem due to Weibull. Okay, so um, yeah, so let's say A is a Z mod P to the JZ algebra. So P no potent ring. Um, I guess I guess I really need to be commutative here. Commutative. Then and K of A star is a P group. Yeah, so in other words, um, you know, for any element x, there exists an n such that p to the n of x is zero. Uh, so this is quite amazing. So for example, um, what you what you what you see is that if I if I take n k of a, and then I take uh, I invert p, then this is just zero. Right, whenever A is of this form, of course. And therefore, uh, the K theory of A, if I invert P, is the same thing as the homotopy K theory of A. So it rightly belongs way back in the, in the motivic uh, situation, right? So let me just say one word about this result. Uh, so this is proved using using an action that Weibull uh, yeah, defined uh, on NK star, on the NK groups. So this action is by the big vid vectors of A. Okay, so um, so there's also another theorem which so I, it's it's more it's it's more worthy to explain how to deduce the p groupness of W of A using the vid vectors. But let me just say uh, a, a simpler a simpler uh, situation, right? So suppose uh, so there's another theorem due to Weibull. So another theorem. So let's say A is a an S inverse Z. Uh, L, or it's like a Q algebra, it's easiest. Okay, then uh, and K of star of A is a Q module as well. Okay, so the reason why this this works is because whenever I think the vid the vid, big vid vectors or something cross like zero, this type me there is a type me lift. And it's a ring map. So somehow, um, and k star of a acquires the structure of an a algebra back again. So this is not true in characteristic p, but in characteristic zero, this is true. And that gives you a very simple explanation as to why n k star is very sensitive to the characteristic of a. Right. So let me let me write that because I think that's a very important punchline. n k star of a is sensitive. to the characteristic of A. So we see this in, in Weibull's theorem. Let me just uh, show this again, right? Whenever A is like a, you know, a ZP algebra, then NK star becomes a P group. So it sees, it's under, it feels the characteristic of A. Uh, and in characteristic zero, it's, it's, a, it's a consequence of this map from the vid vectors from, from you know, A to the vid vectors which is a ring map in the characteristic zero case. And this map is called the type in the lift. And uh, that tells you that NK star of a Q algebra is again a Q module. Okay. And, uh, and that's very surprising, right? Like, okay, K theory does not behave like this, for example. Yeah, so I don't know, K theory FP is Z. <laughs> I mean, zero, I guess, right? So Z is, by, is the furthest thing there is from like characteristic P object. Okay, it's not a P group, but NK is, right? That's like sort of uh, one of the first magical things about NK. 
Okay, any questions about this? Okay, a couple. Uh, is it also somehow a discrete module over the wheat track over the wheat vectors? Uh, I'm thinking about why it actually becomes like futuristic ring. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I. I think you're right. Yeah. That's. Uh, you mean there's a continuous action of the vit. There's a continuous. There's a topology on the vit vectors, and this is just a discrete module over this continuous ring. Yeah. I think that's true. Okay. So that's uh, that's one way to do it. Okay. So right. Then then another result using the same, using the Weibull action. There's this result due to Farrell. Yeah, and this is when uh, you know all hell breaks loose, right? So uh, for all says this, whenever so A is a commutative ring, <laughs> and uh, if n k star of A is non-zero, then it must be infinitely it must be infinitely generated group, not finitely generated. Uh, yeah, so this uses the vid vectors action. So roughly speaking, uh, so the vid vectors has this W and F's operation, like it's like an extra structure in the vid vectors, which descends on the action on NK. And there's a certain relation between V and F, right? So NK star can be filtered by say, um, how much F kills it. So if it's finitely generated, then uh, there's a finite F that kills um, all of NK, uh, but then, if I, it, if I play around with how F and Vs interact, it tells you that uh, there's a higher power that does not get killed by F. Okay, but okay, that's sort of a sketchy proof, but this is a result due to Tom Farrell, which exploits this action. It tells you, uh, yeah, in, in other words, I, I guess I'm trying to say that the, the V and F filtrations that you can construct on NK cannot ever be exhausted if, it's, if NK is, is non zero. So therefore, it's not finally generated. I mean, this Trevini is the Shibun, right? Yes, the Frobenius and the Bushido. Okay, so Somehow, uh, hold on. I didn't get uh, for any degree. Yeah. Yeah. I exactly. mean, you you put n k star, uh, but NK star, exactly for any degree. So whenever, degree. sorry. Okay. Yeah. So whenever you see a star, right, let's say ten or something, which is not zero, then the group must be infinitely generated. That's that's the point. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So that's a uh, kind of incredible. So it tells you that there is do, something. Do, do, yeah. Sorry. Do you know the simplest example? Yes. I'll I'll tell you in a moment. Okay. Thanks. Uh. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so before I tell you the simplest example, I think I wanted to make one more remark. Uh. Okay, maybe yeah. Okay, I'll just I just I just go ahead. Okay, so it tells you that n k is a uh, very I don't know very it's intrinsic. It's very intrinsic to uh, the k theory of singular schemes. Let me let me uh yeah. So let me just say uh, why n k is non zero first. <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah, I forgot. I should have done that. So let's say A is some ring, right? Uh, and then, um, yeah, so we have uh, A adjoin X, right? Modulo X to the N, say. Yeah, so just a nil potent thickening of X. So uh, I can look on the one hand at, let's say, K1 of A, X mod uh, X to the N. A joint T, right over the affine line, and there is I can compare this with this K one of A X, what X to the N. But this uh, so inside here there's a sum n called the units of course uh, you know it's equal whenever things are local but it doesn't have to be, uh, yeah so it's like A X, comma T I guess comma X N of the units, but this is not going to be the same because, for example, there's this new unit here called 1 plus Tx, right? since uh, x is no potent, for example. So that's a very simple example of the non-zeroness of nk. Okay. And I'll tell you the simplest 
example of a complete computation of NK due to van der Kallen in the 1970s in the next slide. So let's say, uh, yeah, so if A is this thing, FP, uh, I join X, one X squared, then van der Kallen, and it's not such an easy computation, but uh, it tells you, it conceptually tells you where, where, you know, where things lie. So NK2, yeah, NK2 of uh, A sits inside an exact sequence that goes like this, FPX. Yeah, so this is as an abelian group. So it's polynomials in FP variables, but like with uh, no non-zero, with the constants being with zero constant, right? Map like this. And then the, the co-kernel is something uh, very suspicious. It's called omega one of FPX, FPT over uh, FP. Yeah, so the appearance of this FP is not so surprising because there's an A1 going on, right? But uh, differential forms tells you that there's some uh, uh, it smells of trace methods already. Yeah, yeah 19, 1971, I think was the date. Okay, so you see that uh, this thing is very infinitely generated, right? As an abelian group, this is like huge. Yeah, so there's this sum n here, which is like very uncontrollable. Not uncontrollable, but like just big. But then there's this, uh, yeah, there's this omega one. Okay. Okay, uh, does that, does that uh, try to give you a picture, Losha? Yes, I can. And so, is uh, there a nice formula or answer for NK1 in the previous example? That probably is, but uh, I'll leave you as an exercise to, to try and compute it. <laughs> yeah. No, maybe, you know, you have, you know, secret connections with more omegas. <laughs> I think, I think NK, yeah. Anyway, yeah, there, there's some, uh, I think, I think there is a simple way to do these things, but uh, anyway, I don't think I can do it right off the top. Okay. Does the left hand side correspond to the thing that comes from K3? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It does. Yeah. Uh, okay. Good. So so what do I do? Okay, so uh yeah, so, so that's our one. And K well, there's one more. Uh before I, I so be, before I finish off this list of like theorems. Okay, so uh Secretly, what's happening in whatever I'm going to tell you in, in like the actual results uh, relies on this theorem, but like implicitly, not explicitly. And this is this theorem is due to uh, van der Kallen again. Uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, so van der Kallen did a lot of work on this, and Voris was a student, although Voris. You know, he wrote a lot of amazing papers about NK, but he realized investment banking was more interesting. So he's now like an investment banker, apparently. Uh, so here's a, here's a theorem due to, due to Van der Kallen. Yeah, and, and ready to be shocked. So A as a functor to NK, as a, so now we can use pre of spectra. So this assignment, okay, whatever. Let's just put a schemes because this can easily be uh, transcribed to schemes. Yeah, it's an et al sheaf. Okay, boom, like what? Right, so, so I've sort of been hyping up that NK is very difficult. But on the other hand, this is like the major obstruction be, between about, about computing K theory. You can't compute K theory because, <laughs> because it's not an etal sheaf, right? But NK is, so this is like one major thing and it sort of, it's an encouraging thing. It should tell you that you can like try to attack it, try to understand it uh, better, yeah. So, sorry, what is the reference for this result? Uh, van der Kallen, a, uh, what do you call this? Uh, yeah, what is the name? It's an it's an analyst. I don't really remember journal names. Is that okay? Like it's a mathematician analysis. I can send it to you if you want. It's it's rather an old result. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So in, in fact, he he proves that. Um, yeah, hold on. Sorry, just to check. Uh, when I say that this is an entire shift, I say yes. that you take. I don't know the big tile site of, of what? yeah, on all schemes uh, or what? You look at a small etal site over X. Okay. And then uh, that's an etal shift. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So so maybe uh, to to sort of 
make everyone happier. Uh, there's a sh he proves a sharper version. It's even crazier, yeah? So what he proves is the following. Suppose A to B is a finite etal extension. Okay. Uh, so etal means Nisnevich plus finite etal, right? So you might expect that uh, the NK groups, um, you know, uh, you, you want descent respect to this, okay? So what Van der Kallen showed, so uh, it was the, is the following. So if this is finite etal, then the vid vectors of A to vid vectors of B, like at least the finite vid, the finite length vid vectors is etal. Okay, so that's the first thing we prove. <laughs> the second thing is that NK has base change with respect to maps like this. So it's quasi coherent with respect to W. In other words, NKN of B is isomorphic to NK N of A tensor over W of A with W of B. All right, that's the sharper version. Yeah. So it's like, it feels like a quasi coherent sheaf with respect to W. And that's what this is, this is the exact thing he proved. And, you know, just using uh, this and the descent spectral sequence, you can just deduce that this thing is an etal sheaf in a, in a spectral sense. So that's uh yeah, that's that's the magic. Okay. So uh okay, so here's here's the here's the first question. Uh so in light of the fact that NK is so big, right? Um I wanna ask. Uh so does so even though We know that NK is a P group. NKN is a P group. I don't know. I keep writing X and scheme, but whatever, they're the same. <laughs> Even though we know that NKN is a P group, uh, do we know if it's of bounded torsion? I mean, there was a condition in X, right, for this to come? Sure. Uh, yeah. Okay. So maybe I should. I should. Well, because of the title of the talk, let's say A is a ZP algebra. Okay. Thank you. ZPJ, Z, well, P, P no potent ring. Right, so P groups come in two flavors, of course. Uh, well, more or less, you would think they look like this, which is uh, small, like manageable. What's, what's going on? Okay. Uh, or, or things that look like QP mod ZP. Yeah, that's also a P group. <laughs> it's the P, tor the, P, the P torsion elements of the circle. Um, so the question is is, 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 is it of this form or is it of this form? Does it contain things of this form, right? This is like, uh, so, so this is bounded torsion. And this is unbounded torsion. Okay, so. Andrei, выключи, пожалуйста, свой микрофон. Я уже выключил. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, so, so that's, the, that's the question I want to address. And I want to say that this is not such a random question. So, uh, so this is related. This is a natural question. from the point of view of uh, other uh, so-called pathologies of algebraic K theory. So I'll give you the following theorem, uh, which was sort of, uh, yeah, so this was an, you know, a big, a big breakthrough in the subject by Geiser Hasselhalt. So another pathology in K theory is not well, whatever, pathology, phenomenology, something, right? So K theory is not A1 invariant in general. K theory is also not nil invariant in general. Like it's sensitive to th thickenings of ideals. Yeah. So uh, you, wanna, you also wanna measure to what extent uh, does K theory have set, you know, the, to what extent does K theory fail to have you know, put in nil invariants, right? Uh, and and, and the, the first measurement, if you want, uh, is due to Greiser Hasselholt who, who proved that Whenever I is an ideal in A, which is a nil potent ideal. So again, A is a Z 
pinealpotent ring. Then they showed that the homotopy groups of uh, the relative K theory of A, so this is a, maybe I'll, I'll just say that this is the fiber of the map from K of A to K of A mod I. So this is our bounded torsion. Okay. Right, so, so this was a, you know, it tells you that you cannot have this QP mod ZP crap. Uh, it's just like a, it's, it's a bounded torsion group. Okay. Um, and, and for NK, they did some partial results. They, they did some partial work on this as well. So theorem. Oh, they, uh, not, well, there's no guys here. In this one, this is Hesselhold Madsen. So they did. They did. The, the, they proved the following. Uh, I guess you know, relying on the Geisler has a whole theorem. Let's say A is a smooth. Uh, yeah, for them only FP algebra. Right, and then consider, I guess B. You take A. You take a thickening. So of course, NK of A is just zero, but NK of B does not have to be zero. And they prove that NK uh, star of B is a bounded P torsion. So here they explicitly, it's an explicit computation which generalizes uh, Van der Kallen's result in terms of this Durham width complexes. And then um, they show that, uh, you know, as star grows, right, the torsion also grows. So there's no uniform bound on the torsion, but at each star, the torsion is bounded. That's, uh, that's what they show. Okay. So uh, any questions before I, I sort of state the, the main theorems? You mean generalizing that result about the short exact sequence within K and some? Yes. Can you write it down? Uh, you mean it annoying? Yeah, like ex the explicit computation. Uh, if it's annoying, it is, it's, it's, it's annoying. Yeah. It's kind of long. It's a long as a sequence with, okay. uh, with uh, maybe one just one feature. So in the Van der Kallen stuff, I put two n equals to two, right? And and I show you there's an omega on the on the right. Uh, for for guys that has to hold because n is not two n is can be ten or something right uh, the the right hand side is no longer omega is w n omega which depends on n that's that's one big feature of the thing and the w n sort of uh, you know it 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 bounds the torsion right so, so you know the w n w n omega is bounded n torsion right that that n is really the bound on the torsion and it'll tell you that uh you know the bound is given given there. Yeah, in other words, the bound depends on this. Okay. Well, it depends on n and star. So it grows as n and star grows. Okay. Any questions? Any other questions? Okay. So uh so here's the here's the results. Yeah, so let's say A is a commutative. Z mod PJ, Z algebra. There's no theorem. Finite dimensional. So if you want to remove uh, no theorem hypothesis, you can, but you, you just have to impose a finite relative dimension if you want. But I, will not, I don't want to talk about relative dimension. It's, uh, it's basically the CDH cohomological dimension, but uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll, the CDH stuff will come in uh, immediately uh, later. Okay, so in this situation, uh, NK star of A is bounded, has bounded P torsion, right? So this generalizes, uh, has a hold Matson, 
uh, you know, not just of this, not just of not just FP algebras of a certain form, but all commutative ZPJ algebras. So that's uh, that's that's what happens in this like positive characteristic setting. Uh, and then there's one more, and I'll tell you about the mixed characteristic setting. So here's a theorem, and yeah, so. Okay, uh, so let's say, yeah, I'll, I'll write this in, in schemes land to make it more, um, uh, yeah, sorry. So this, this also works for schemes, that's fine. But um, this one is more compelling if you write it in schemes land. So let's say X is over ZP, uh, the theory and finite dimensional scheme. Okay, and then there's a funny assumption, which is the generic fiber is smooth. Okay, so, so often when you look at mixed characteristic schemes, of course, uh, yeah, the central fiber can have like some singularities. It can be like some, I don't know, if you're lucky, normal crossings or semi-stable, whatever. Um, but it's reasonable to insist that generic fiber is smooth. It's like, uh, you know, just, just how, how things work in algebraic geometry. Then NK star, of X is bounded P torsion. As well. Okay, and uh, yeah, this was conjectured by Matthew. Okay. Okay, so, so these are the two results is they're, they're of the form bounded torsion results. And because of our methods is gonna be very inexplicit, but okay, we're also hoping to make some actual computation, some new computations that are, you know, that that's of the, has a whole Madsen flavor. Right? It's a bit more difficult. I mean, computations are hard. Yeah. yeah. So these are two, uh, two results about NK. Any questions about the statements? So that's this one. Okay. Right. Okay. So, uh, so the math, so, uh, so the ideas of proof, like methods. So um, I want to sell you a bit of uh, snake oil, or like I don't know, black magic. Okay. So uh, I don't know. Vova knows this black magic. I think I, you know, I like to think I maybe sold him this black magic. But I want to try to sell uh, sell people this black magic. Okay, it's recorded. Okay, that's kind of okay. Whatever. So I'll tell, I'll, on, on on paper, I'll sell you some black magic. Okay. So uh, yeah. Um, right. So we saw some crazy features about NK. So NK is sensitive to the characteristic. Uh, NK is it all descend, but they will come in later on. And, and also uh, NK star of AI, so this nilpotent phenomenon, right, is uh, is bounded tor is is also bounded torsion, bounded P torsion, of course. And really, uh, not NK, sorry, whoops, a K star of AI. And really, you should think about NK as K star of A adjoined T supported at T, right? I mean, by definition, that's what it is. But here, of course, T is not nilpotent. I claim that all these phenomenon, so NK and even also, uh, so I didn't talk about this much, but if you know uh, something about trace methods, uh, this, this, this relative K theory is also quite, it's also sensitive to the characteristic. Okay, uh, and I claim you can explain away all these three phenomena using a very simple observation, okay? So suppose, so here's some, some I don't know, black magic. So, so you have A to B, a nilpotent extension, which means it's a rejection at whose kernel is nilpotent. Okay, uh, so K theory is GL, a mapping to GLB, right? So you can look at the kernel or the fiber if you want to be fancy. Uh, 
here's the here's the magic. You can check that this is just uh, the kernel of a uh, well. Okay, whatever. It's really GL i, where i is the ideal. So it's a general linear group with values in like the ideal. But here comes the point. So it's mi. The same thing as mi. <laughs> like this is the infinite matrices, not necessarily invertible. Right. So this matrix ring, right? I mean, as an abelian group, this mi, uh, right? So, I mean, this is as groups, right? <laughs> I mean, this mi is the thing which has, which is more sensitive to i. So this is the thing which is sensitive to the characteristic. So you turn a GL problem into a matrix problem, uh, into an M problem, where MI is something which is way more manageable than just GLI. Wait, how come, I mean, there are more matrices than inverse matrices, what's going on? You should think about why you should use the nilpotent hypothesis. Oof. Well, I'm trying, but there is a zero matrix. Yeah, you should take something like one, one plus. Oh. And what do you think? Right. OK. Uh, I guess, sorry, uh, shouldn't I be not only nil potent but also square zero here? Oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, okay, okay, square zero. I mean, it's still like sensitive. But... Otherwise, the uh, nil potent degree can go crazy. Okay, square zero. <laughs> uh, but okay, of course, that's, that's the only example of nil potent extensions ever. <laughs> or rather, everything can be reduced to that situation. This is like, uh, the philosophy. Okay, so uh, GL is something k-theoretic. MI is something else. MI is something which is top TC theoretic. So this is like a multiplicative type invariant, and this is like an additive type invariant, right? So being able to trade GL for M is a very useful uh, trade. It's a you. If the devil offers you that trade, you should take it. Right? I swear. And let's take it and 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 prove and say something about NK. So right, the, so the problem is that NK problem is that uh, you know K of A adjoined T T is uh, so this T is not nilpotent ideal. All right, so you cannot like just you know willy nilly. Uh, Use some kind of trace methods. Like trace methods, is not just is not enough to uh, uh, to access to access these groups. So, but you need one more ingredient, but just one more ingredient. So I'll encapsulate this, encapsulate it in a theorem, which I will uh, give you the proof of. So that's kind of nice. Um, and, but it's really due to a lot of people. So, uh, so let me. So the first person who would know how to do this is Christian Hessemeyer in Karasek zero in his thesis. And then Duny Charles will be able to prove uh, some parts of this uh, in you know great generality. Uh, and then, yeah, so uh, you also need some ingredient from Kretstrom Tama. And uh, but not the full strength of Weibull's conjecture, just very tiny parts. And then you need uh, yeah, you need, importantly, a, a theorem of Lan and Tama. And then if you want to uh, escape the no theorem situation, you need our uh, CDH hypercompleteness um, results. So with Mark, uh, Shane and Kelly, and Shane, Shane and Kelly, Romy and Kelly, you should Romy and Shane. Ah, okay. So here's a, here's the result. So whenever A is QCQS, okay, uh, yeah, finite relative dimension. But if you want just no theory and finite dimension is, 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 is good enough. Then, okay, maybe I'll write it in the next page. I don't know how healthy this is to write one theorem in the next page. So NK of X is given as follows, is N of the fiber so n is again the fiber, you know, from x times a1 into x. Yeah? So it's just the same construction, but I'm doing it on another functor, not just k. So it's a fiber uh, 
from TC of X. Or, okay, I'll just apply X to ADN into L C D H T C. Okay. Right, so what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take the, the difference between, uh, between um, uh, the CTC, topological cyclic homology, and uh, CDH, Shifify TC, right? Take the difference between that, take N of it, which is the difference between the homotopy invariance of this fiber, and that gives you K theory. And I guess my job now is, so I'll prove this, and my job is to convince you why this is a useful trade to make. Okay, so here's the proof. Yeah, and the proof, uh, um, oh, sorry. So the proof, okay, I'll, I'll proceed to the proof. So I claim that uh, the K theory uh, to LCDHK, so TC, this is the trace map. So Volva talked about TC. Did you talk about TC in the seminar? No. Not really. But let me, uh, okay, so let me make some case for TC in a bit. But for now, just know that this is just much more manageable. So this is more homological. So, so yeah. So K theory to TC, and then you take LCDH to TC. Okay, so I claim that this is a pullback. So to prove that, uh, we, look, we look at the fiber. The fiber has a name, it's called K-inf. Uh, and then there's a map to LCDH K-inf. Okay. Then uh, Lantama, says that um, k-inf has CDH descent. So here's, here's the basic idea because I, I, I need it again and again. So th this is a remarkable observation uh, or a remarkable theorem due to Lon and Tama. And they said the following. So suppose, uh, yeah, suppose that you have A, an E1 ring spectrum So it's a, it's a ring spectrum, which is uh, associative up to higher homotopies. So just yeah, the derived version of associative rings, uh, connective. And suppose you have A to map maps to pi zero of A. Uh, so there's this map like this. And you should regard this as a really a case of a nilpotent extension, right? Because um, pi zero of both objects are the same by default since there's pi zero here. Uh, and you know there's no kernel, it's an isomorphism, so there's no kernel on pi zero. And the only difference between A and pi zero A are the higher, uh, higher homotopy groups of A. And uh, that should be regarded as a nilpotent extension because the higher homotopies are, should be thought of as fuzz. Right? Okay, so you have an extension, you have this, this map. Uh, so if, a localizing invariant in the sense of bloomberg and tabuada like K-theory, like TC, like all this K-inf business. If the localizing invariant uh, is insensitive to this map, i.e. E of A is equivalent to E of pi zero of A, then E has CDH descent. Uh, right, so maybe let me just say one quick word about this and, uh, and, and it will relate to, I think what Vova talked about in this seminar, right? So you talk about pro-CDH descent, right? Yes, I did. So any, what they showed is, well, firstly, any localizing invariant uh, has pro-CDH descent. So it has this like, this pullback square. All right, so everyone here knows what a, uh, CDH square is, so I don't have, I can skip that. 
is the beauty of speaking a seminar like this. So you have a, this kind of pullback square, always. Uh, but but now something's you know, funny. What? The direction of arrows is funny, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Better. It should be like this. It's much better. <laughs> right. So it is a pullback square, uh, but the thickenings gets eliminated whenever. Right. So this is a kind of nil derived nil invariance phenomenon. Like this is a derived nil invariance condition. So you should expect all these thickenings to be constants, and this is what happens. Okay, that's like not really a proof, but uh, that's the basic idea. Okay, so let me repeat. So we were we were look, examining this pullback square. Uh, I'll just copy. I'll copy this because I need to do that. That's actually the proof. Yes, that's the proof. <laughs> I mean, yes, yeah. So as Boba said, so oh oh, you mean you mean the nil potent thing? Yeah, okay. I mean, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, so we have this, this square, you want to prove it's a pullback. That's the same thing as saying that the fibers are equivalent and that's the same thing as the fibers being a K inf being a CDH chief. Okay, so, so to do that, uh, I, 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 I have to check that K inf is truncating, right? So this, uh, this, this property is called truncating, by the way, being incestuous. Excuse me, uh, it is CDH chief or it has CDH descent? I am thought CDH descent means that, well, it does not have to be, yes. how is it called, separated or something. Uh, ah, so uh, let me, okay, so what I mean is take the C, take the abstract blob square to a pullback. That's what I mean by CDH descent. And I can only, that only, that is only legit whenever all the maps are finally presented and I'm using that convention that this is a blow up which is finally presented. Is, is that- but Then uh, I would say, well, I mean, it, is it a CDH sheaf or not? Sorry, <laughs> precise question. By CDH sheaf, I mean, take this thing to a pullback. So in your language, it is a CDH shift because um... yes. yeah, it's a homotopy. I, I assume it's also a CDH shift in your sense because it's so it also has Nisnevich descent, and Nisnevich descent plus this gives you, uh, but uh, gives you the oh, CDH descent. I think descent. It, is, uh, it is a shift in my sense too, and then everybody says, yeah, I was just confused because initially Elden said that it just has CDH. Uh, uh, descent, yeah. and I understand CDH descent as CDH patching, right? So. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I mean, some factors satisfy patching, but they are not shifts. Sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. So, so okay. I hope that that gets clarified. So, uh, yeah. So then, K inf is truncating. So this this fiber, this K inf is truncating. But it's the same thing as this famous Dundas Goodwilly McCarthy theorem. That says uh, K inf is nil invariant. So that, that's nice. So we have this pullback square. So what do we do with this pullback square? Uh, Right, so I think that's, if, if there's anything from this talk that you wanna take, take away from, uh, it's like this, I really believe in this pullback square. It's like this pullback square, yeah, it, it's great. Uh, so, well, one reason why it's great is because I know what LCDHK is, it's something familiar to everyone in this audience, it's just homotopy K theory. And this is where you use the heavy machinery of Hesemeyer, Sosinski, uh, and all these people. <clears throat> yeah, so it tells you that uh, there is a, you can reinterpret CDH shifted K theory as two things, as homotopy K theory or as just a CDH shifted right? So that's a, that's a magic. So if you have that, then um, what I can do is I can do the following. So I want to take the fiber. So I think FK. So this is just the fiber. So FK is the is the is the obstruction to K theory having CDH descent, and I can also take the fiber here. FTC. Yeah, so there's the obstruction to TC having CDH descent. So this is a pullback, this is an equivalence. But now I, I, I apply N everywhere. So I apply this functor N, which is uh, you know, the obstruction to being homotopy invariant. But guess what? This is zero because N of KH is better be zero because KH is homotopy invariant. And therefore this is an equivalence. 
So you have an equivalence like this between the n between the n version of k and n version of FTC. Okay, so uh, so that's the result. Uh, any questions about this? Yeah. So let me uh, let me spend since I have some time. I, I want to spend a bit more time on uh, on this on this pullback. Yeah. So this is kind of awesome. Then it's your favorite pullback since a couple of months already. <laughs> I, I, I've just been doing this the whole quarantine basically. <laughs> You found your last pullback. I, I do. Uh, yeah, you did. You did. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so this is basically something that we understand very well. This is like motivic homotopy. Um, <clears throat> so this is like trace methods. Right, um, and it's glued together by a this thing called the CDH three five TC, and we 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 know more uh, about this now than uh, a few months back. So, for example, we know that this is like a, a something called a CD arc sheaf. So, it has more descent than just CDH descent, and this is something that we, one can understand. <clears throat> In fact, you can also show that uh, this is an etal sheaf. So I can show this. And um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's not so obvious because CDA shifification of an etal shift may break etal shift, but uh, in fact, you can show it's still an etal shift. Um, and this formula NK being N of the fiber of TC mapping to LCDHTC, it, it, it jibes well with the fact that LCDHTC is an etal shift. So this is an etal sheaf. I mean, it's a flat sheaf even from the work of Budmore and Schulze. LCDHTC is a is a, uh, is, a is an etal sheaf again, and and so this inside thing is an etal sheaf, and n is a finite procedure, it's a finite limit, and does not break etal sheafness. So that's another way to see that nk is an etal sheaf, for example. Um, yeah. So you know, if if I just threw you this formula, you might smell like this might be a bit fishy. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you don't, like if there's no N right here, this, this formula is just plain wrong because you should not say that, you should not prove that K theory has etal descent, but N does. And this is why uh, this, this is like an okay formula. Like this is like, this makes sense. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, so I'll tell you how to prove the first result then. So, anyway, yeah, so uh, like thinking about this is, has been, has occupied me, uh, Quite a lot during this quarantine, and yeah, I don't know. I encourage you guys to come up with your own questions about this square, and maybe we can chat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So, so, so here's a here's the theorem that says uh, suppose A is a Z mod P J Z algebra, then N K of A is bounded P torsion. Okay, so the first ingredient of, of the proof is a criterion for when something has bounded P torsion, right? So, so note that if I take something like Z mod P and Z, right, and I invert P, right, then that's zero. Uh, and here's, a, here's, here's Bud's results. Uh, that sort of gives a converse to this. Uh, so suppose E is a bounded below spectrum. So it's homotopic groups. It's like bounded below, like stops at pi minus five or something. Or you can even you know, think about connected. That's all, this is the only case we really care about really. Um, yeah, then the following are equivalent is homotopy groups. Uh, is bounded P torsion. And if I take E and I P complete it and I invert P, uh, this is zero. 
Yeah, so uh, being bounded P torsion is equivalent to saying that it's completion and then inverting P is zero. This is a, 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 an observation due to bar graph. It's like a, it's like a you know, it's like, um, how to say, it's a converse to like this observation. Basically. Is it formal, this batch result? No, no, not at all. Uh, this is, uh, he uses the open mapping theorem in functional analysis to prove this. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so Positelsky also has a longer proof, which is purely algebraic. Yeah, so, so kind of nice. So it says it's a, it's a theorem that says torsion completions are bounded. As soon as you're, well, you need this completion. So you need the derived complete, you need the object to be derived complete. So it needs to be like completed. And if you invert P, so go to QP coefficients, if it's zero, then you learn that uh, the derived completion is bounded torsion. But, uh, but the P torsion, uh, of, a, of, a, of a spectrum only depends on this like derived completion. So, so that's a, yeah, so this is, this is, we use this, right? So because we use this, we don't get any bound on torsion explicitly. I mean, you know, just whatever, this dies. Okay, so, so then you want to show that NK of such a thing with QP coefficients, and by that I mean NK of A, I P complete the spectrum and I invert P, is zero. But now we have this magical theorem that says N is the fiber of TC of A to LCDHTC of A, right? Uh, okay, sorry, this equalities are funny, but okay, I just write this. So this is equals to this. So then uh, claim follows. If we can show That what? Okay, that uh, that TC is a CDH sheaf. TCQP, sorry. I have to invert, invert P everywhere. Uh, TC blank QP is a CDH sheaf. Sorry, Alden, I got a bit lost. So do you know that this is zero or you want that this is zero? We want, no, we want, okay, cool. So, so to, to prove bounded torsion, I just yeah. have to have to show this thing that's highlighted in red. Uh -huh. Okay, cool. So using uh, the, the trade with the devil that I want to make is I want to trade NK for TC. Okay, but it's TC. Oh, sorry. I think you mentioned that TC is in a tal shift, right? Maybe yeah. that was the source of yes. more of the question. Yes. TC is in a tal shift. That's correct. Is there a question? Is there a... Oh, no, just reminding people. Yes. Uh, Yes, so but now I want to, you know, show that TC is a CDA shift. So I want to show this abstract blow up thing, right? Right, because N of zero is zero. I mean, okay, yeah, exercise, but <laughs> N of zero is zero. So how do you show that something is a CDA shift? Well, uh, so suffices to prove, suffices to use Lantama. And this is truncating the map. Uh, E, I guess, let me write A, maps to pi zero of A, it's a connective E1 ring, induces, ah, connective E1 ZP algebra, induces ISO on, uh, yeah, TC of A with QP coefficients versus T, TC of uh, pi zero of A with QP coefficients. Okay, so uh, so so we look at the fiber A relative to pi zero of A with QP coefficients, and then we use this. Uh, uh, the square zero black metric. So, so can reduce to the following. So suppose A is an E1 ring and M is an A module. I can form uh, A directs some M, which is the square zero extension, which is completely analogous in the world of spectra as it is in usual algebra. Uh, 
So in this case, we can do the following. We can take TC of uh, A comma A direct sum M. So what are we doing with these QP coefficients? We are completing and we're inverting T. Uh, and here's here's the here's the main here's the main thing. We can bring the a we can bring the p inside. Ah, okay. So maybe maybe I'll do this step by step. So firstly, uh, so firstly, I can remove this p completion. Since uh, it's already complete. That's sort of the point. I'm a bit confused because I thought we have like square zero extension in the other direction, as in you have pi zero and you square zero extend it. And somehow it happened otherwise. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I mean, okay. Can I write the other way? Thanks. Oh, so oh, oh, okay. So that's the right thing. Okay, good. Maybe like, like this is good. Okay, how about this? Relative to the ideal M. Okay. Okay. Maybe you don't like that. You don't like. Well, I'm just. I'm just. I mean, it's not about notation. So pi zero. Okay. I thought of a spectrum as square zero extension of its pi zero. Sorry, as if it's you know, thinking of its pi zero, right? No. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 So. Uh, uh, Your yeah, m so, is like pi one or something. Uh. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Or pi, pi i. That's what uh, I like. Sure, but how, how to how to how to explain this? Um, yeah, pi, uh, yeah, let's say m shifted by one. Okay, well, it doesn't really matter. How about that? Yeah, so it's a it's, it's it's in pi one. It's a pi one thing. Okay. Uh, so so first, okay, first you can remove completion. So the removal of completion is a TC is a TC thing. Um, so I'll say I'll say one word about that because I think that's quite important. Um, yeah. So so what is TC? Right? TC is born from THH. Yeah. So THH of a ring is given by this cyclic bar construction, right? So this is a R mapping to R tensor R mapping to R tensor R tensor R. Like you know, of course these symbols have to be justified, but you know there are three maps: A, B, tensor C, uh, A tensor B C, and uh, A uh, C tensor A on the left with B. Right. So uh, it's a geometric realization, right, uh, of things which which are um, which are Z. Okay. So whenever R is uh, if R is penial potent. Right, uh, the 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 resulting geometric realization is P complete. So it's still P complete already. Okay, so that's that's not enough. Of course, you have to say that the P completion passes through all the procedures, but but it does. Sorry, can you elaborate on this a bit more? Because like we're taking a sifted call limit or p complete things, or is it p complete? I guess this is what uh, you're saying. I, I, yeah, that's true. Sifted call limit of p complete things is p complete. Uh, it, it's a, it's in it's in this, this thh very far from homotopy functors business that I wrote. Yeah. Um, so there is a criterion for being p being p complete in terms of its homotopy groups, and you just you just uh, you just compute. Directly there. Sorry, I'm confused. It, it, it's not even true that like uh, filtered limit of p complete things is. Ah, sorry, geometric realization of p complete things is p complete. That's right. So it's only true for okay. okay. Right, because geometric realization is basically the front end limit. Okay, so I'll, I'll tell you the quick proof. Okay. Right, so okay. you can check p completeness on a homotopy gate. Fine. And, and because if you want to compute pi j, you only need a finite number of this finite stage in the ah, ah. So it's a, ah, so it's always true if you if also you, you need bounded things in your bounded, own. bounded, bounded, yeah. Yeah, right. Okay. So, so we I use the following fact that the geometricalization of bounded P 
p-complete uh, objects is p-complete by check on homotopy groups. Uh, yeah, so I mean, but okay, so maybe maybe this is this is even more has a wider appeal. So this is the criteria, and so you need to check the x zero and x one, right, of something which is p invertible or p local into the homotopy groups of E is zero. That's the criterion for derived p completeness. So uh, this is an SAG, like Jacob's SAG, but it's like very classical. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Good. So, so that's some evidence. I mean, you have to, you have to, TC is built from THH by other functors. So you have to pass through the P completeness there. Uh, and yeah, so what was I? So A, A directs some M, one over P, and here's the magic. I can bring this in. So uh, you know the reference for this is Sam Raskin's write-up. Of a you know write-up of a, the DGM theorem. But you can sort of predict this if you if you believe in this MIGLI trait that I made. <laughs> right, so being sensitive to to the in an underlying characteristic tells you that you must also be sensitive to uh, you know various localization procedures. And the end is zero because when you invert, when, when I mean, these are Z mod PJZ algebras, well, Z mod, Z mod PJZ modules algebras, so they're just zero. So that's, that's that proves truncativity. Okay. Any questions? So, can you show again? So, we wanted to show that. If you go back a couple of pages, okay, yeah, that this so the TC with QP coefficients is truncating, right? Yes. And you say it's enough, okay, so it's enough to check the case when you're just a square zero extension of pi zero. Yes. And and then you somehow. And then right, and then so what is the definition of QP? It means that is you P complete and then you invert P, right? Yeah. Okay, and then I can say you can remove the P completion. I mean, you can like ignore mm -hmm. the P completion because there's already P complete. Yeah. And, you can bring you, and, and in that case, you can pull the one over p inside. Okay, and then one to get zero. Because a is a z mod pj oh, z. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, zero. too many things to get in head. <laughs> Sorry, can you can you say it again? Why is it related to DGM at all? Uh, uh, move, being able to move one over p inside. So he, so right is is to get the rational part of DGM. So so Raskin gives an integral proof of DGM, right? So you need to talk about right. what rationalize. So when you rationalize TC is just TC minus, that's like sort of the point. And uh, and part of the proof that is TC minus, you need to pull it in. Okay, so this is inside the proof. This is it's not like it follows from the statement. Yes, it doesn't follow. <laughs> but but it's it's not hard to like prove independently. Not too hard. I guess. Okay. Uh, so that's 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 the first that's the, that's the positive characteristic result. Um, so what I want. So before Sorry, I, is it is it true? Uh, is it true for any like uh, in which generality generality you can move one over p inside? Yeah. So I think the like way that a is a. Yeah. It's uh, always when a is a. P, p, no, you can always you can always pull inside, but it's not clear that you can pull inside in the p complete setting. That's a major point. You need to know that it's actually already p complete. Yeah, yeah, okay. Assuming we are, uh, well, okay. Assuming we have a map A to B, yes. and we're looking at the fiber from yes. even even okay. If we, if we have just T C of A, is it true that inversion P of A is the same as inversion? It's yes. not the same. No. So it's only true for new potent extensions. It's new potent extensions. Yes. I see. Okay. It's not right. So I should say this GLI versus MI philosophy, right? It's not to say that TC is just strictly MI. So I think, okay, let me just say something about this. This you can do. THH of A on over P, you can put it in, right? Do you agree with that? It's just co-limits commuting equivalents. 
Right. But, right. but you can't, you cannot pull this operation all the way to TC. You can only do it, you can only do it on the fibers. Yeah. This reminds me of that Landers contra example okay. of exactly. not TC not computing, not commuting with call limits of categories. Yeah, so you, you can pull the you can pull one over P inside as, as much as you want on THH, but not for TC. Uh, thanks. And, and, and I mean, it's, it's really just because of this formula for THH as like a co-limit of this this guy and co-limits coming with co-limits. So. Okay. Right. Good. Okay. So uh, so the mixed characteristic situation. So. Uh, so I'll say, I'll, so I'll say that this is still in progress. There was like a little mix up with uh, with P completion, but I'll tell you what, what we know right now. Okay. So, uh, so in the mixed artist situation, your 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 tool is this thing that uh, is being is ran as a seminar in in Zurich right now, I guess. Uh, is the Bayleson fiber square? We already ran the seminar. Okay, ran already ran. Yeah, so this whole talk is about like trading invariance uh, in different situations, right? So Bayleson fiber square is a result due to Bayleson and more recently, uh, Antio Matthew uh, Morrow Nicolaus. And um, so it, it gives you it gives you a description of rational TC. So here's the theorem that he showed. So whenever R is a is a ring, in fact for them uh, it's fine to be it's fine to be associative. But okay, we only care about commutative settings, of course. So I want to compute TC of R, right? But I don't want to compute TC of R. It's too hard. I want to compute it with rational coefficients, which is uh, all you need to address this bounded torsion. Uh, problems. So in that case, this guy tells us that um, it can be computed in a much more naive way. Uh, then, so there's a map from here to HC minus of RQP, so the negative cyclic homology. And that's really purely homological, periodic cyclic homology, also purely homological. And downstairs, you really mean by that QP coefficients, not not like completion anything, in just or 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 is it? it isn't it the same body? It, it's the same construction as for TC, or you are just taking QP coefficients, really? How do you take QP? How do you take QP coefficients without? Ah, okay, okay, okay. Ah, right. Okay, yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, uh, of course, you can write down some explicit complex that represents these guys. Maybe that's the thing that you say. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so there's a pullback square like this. Okay. So this is fantastic. Uh, so let me make some comments about this. So, so this is uh, this is the natural map. So there's a map from TC to TC minus and uh, go down, going down to HC like this. Uh, yeah, so, so the difference between this topological stuff and this homological stuff is this is carried out over the sphere spectrum. So it has involved spectra. This is just complexes, right? You just tensor, uh, you, ju you just base change from the sphere spectrum to the integers. So this is a linearization procedure. Uh, and, and the, the thing you should notice is that there is an R mod P here. Um, and then there's an, there's an R here. Yeah, so there's a difference. So this is going to characteristic P and then this is a lift, right? And this is what they call the crystalline trend class. Trend character, sorry. Trend, trend character. So, uh, so to read, to understand, how, how do you read this fiber sequence? You read this fiber sequence by saying, um, 
if, if I have a class in, in here and I want to lift it to a class here, right? The obstruction is precisely homological right here. So that's a, that's a, that's one way to read this, this balance in fiber square. Okay. So I want to, I want to apply this for R to be a ZP algebra. And I want to treat n, uh, n f, sorry, n of the fiber uh, from TC to LCDHTC, right? Uh, yeah, after p completion and one over p, uh, with something more homological. Okay, and here's the lemma. Uh, in this case, I can trade n of the fiber of TC to LCDHTC with the same thing, but with HC. So with the homological versions up to a suspension. Uh, okay, so this is a, this is cyclic homology. Why up to, why up to suspension? Yeah, I'll tell you why. Yeah. So, so uh, here's a, here's a proof sketch. So we have this fiber valence and fiber square, right? Oh. I'm suppressing the QP coefficients, but it's there. These are rationalized theories. Okay, so um, so there's also the version with the CDH everywhere, right? But we know that this guy. This guy has CDH descent. This corner has CDH descent. Right? So therefore, uh, you know, uh, if I take the F version of these theories, in other words, the fiber from, uh, the fiber from, uh, you know, the, ver the versions of these theories to their CDH, to their CDH counterparts, their CDH reification, then this one is zero. Right, but you're looking at the fiber of the canonical map from HC minus to HP. So we end up getting HC there. Does that make sense, Boba? With a suspension, of course. Yeah, because this is yes, always- Yes, totally. It totally does. Okay, so I've traded homologic. So what have I done, right? If I'm willing to work with QP coefficients, I've traded topology entirely. I've dismissed, I've like removed any semblance of like homotopy theory. And it's purely homological right now, okay? And it's just purely just HC. Uh, yeah, maybe this is-, is there even... no HP? What? Is there no HP? Uh, right, we, so- We magically got rid of this because we have this fiber sequence. Yes. Like HP is a prioritization of HC, so, you know. Right. So, like this, right? Now uh, I go all the way down to Hochschild homology. <laughs> here's here's one, last, one last lemma. Okay, so uh, yeah, so so this is called the SBI sequence. And uh, and this is this involves n, so zero. So there's a short exact sequence like this. So n, hc n minus one of r with qp coefficients, n hh of n of r with qp coefficients, and hc n r qp with qp coefficients zero. So um, yeah, so this is 
I guess this this map is called B, and this map is called I. I think in a, in most in most settings. So um, if you know like the older cyclic homology story, so I'm just using very old school stuff. This is nothing. So once you go homological, there's nothing new. This the sequence was known to like cons in like the 60s, 70s. So the SBI sequence splits because the boundary map is zero as proven by, as proved by, by good really. So let me just wrap up uh, since you know I do have to teach, but let me um, wrap up uh, the, 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 the this proof, right? So we traded uh, NK with uh, an FTC and the fiber of uh, the stick atomic trace. Okay, so then you trade FTC, so rationally with QP coefficients plus Bailinson fiber. We traded FTC for FHC. Uh, then you treat N and HC, which which is some of the terms in this in this expression, with with uh, NHH. So using induction, right? So there's some there's some this expresses these HC groups in terms of a quotient of a lower HC with HH. So you basically treat NHC with NHH. And here's a the, one of the key punchlines that HH is, has Kunath formula. So we understand how to compute and can compute NHH because you know how to compute HH of X times A1 with HH of X tensor HH times A1. Uh, and that's how you eventually uh, address, address this problem of bounded torsion. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I think I'll, I'll stop there. Yeah, thank you very much for your talk. Thank you. Yeah, questions, please. Are you saying that for HH it's obvious just because, you know, like uh, HH of X cross A1 is just HH of X times HH of A1, yeah, and HH so of A1 is something stupid even in, even over Z? Let me, let me write for you. All right, so this is uh, has two components. He has HH of N of, uh, uh, yeah, so HH of N of R tensor over whatever your base is. I don't know, it's over Z, I guess, of like Z adjoint T, right? Which is HH zero plus HH of N minus one of R tensor of Z. And this explains the this omega one appearing. By, by HKR, uh, this omega one Z. Uh, that's uh that's this is this is why H is so simple. I mean, this is just the Kunet formula. There's a consequence of the Kunet formula. And the higher terms are higher omegas. So what is it? I, what? I, I don't know. What oh, what are the higher terms of? Higher, H H of H H H of Z adjoint T has only two. Oh, terms. it's just this. No higher terms. It stops. It's like a super like small Kunet formula. Uh, Losha was mentioning that uh, the like in the FP mod FP 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 adjoint T mod T square example, yes. the left hand side part which was X, the yeah. the ideal generated by X in in this yeah. polynomial ring, come uh, comes uh, it it comes from uh, K three. Yes. How do I see that? Yeah. I... Maybe maybe it's a question to Lasha rather than you. I don't know. No, I think Lasha is right. I... No, no. I just asked Eldon, and Eldon said that yeah, this is the case. Yeah, yeah. So this is so the reason why I say instinctively yes is because uh, it is this has to hold mass and computation best sandwich and k between. K three groups or oh, like higher higher K N groups, uh, but yeah, yeah, I mean that's that's sort of the idea. But I I I cannot reproduce this. Okay, you could maybe you could possibly somehow see that the other term is the kernel on K two. I mean right. the things that which omega one. Uh, 
yeah, this this I, this I believe because this is like the the TC term. Yeah, the TC term exactly. Yeah, that's the TC term in K two. Yeah, so so this, I mean, this is some partial explanation of the appearance of differential forms in the story, um, is via the Kunet formula for H H, which you can, you know, you can go all the way down. It has to appear. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Fun. Actually, when you write omega one, you just mean HH one, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. HH one is omega one after the fact, after HKR. Okay, good. Because... Thank you very much. It's very cool. Can you send the notes, please? Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, could you give some references uh, yes. for, uh, for the material of your talk? Of, uh, of that something is finally generated? Yes. It's uh, okay. Do you it's know right. if finally generated? Uh, it's right here. It's right here. This is uh, Mikhail Pondarko, right? Are, is that you? Yes, this is me. Yes. Okay. So, uh, just a sec. Uh, it's in the keyboard. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Okay, I guess. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, I thought I had it open right here, but. Uh, okay, um, just a sec, okay? Just. Yes, so, in the keyboard, page uh, 355. Uh, 6.7.4. Yeah, that's a reference for Pharrell. Do you, do you, do you want any other references? If you can give uh, useful references, then yes, I don't know. It's uh, for you um, to decide. Um, yeah, so I guess the, I guess. Yeah, so I, this is not written yet, but, uh, I mean, as soon as it's ready, I'll, I'll yeah, I, I, I can send it to you if, if you want. Ah, maybe there's one reference. So in characteristic zero, I forgot. So this is so embarrassing. So characteristic zero, this whole story was uh, uh, Cortinas, Meyer, Weibel, and Walter. So believe it or not, I think they only have one paper with this for. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, thank you very much. So, some of the techniques are borrowed from this thing, Harrison Zero. Yeah. Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you for your talk. Yes. Thanks for inviting. This was